Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 jailbreak news update. There is so much stuff going on at the moment with the PS4 and PS5, lots of developments happening. I don't think there's ever been a time previously where we've had this many different uh, exploits and developments all happening at the same time. So yeah, lots to cover here. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. So starting with the YouTube jailbreak is getting very, very close to a release. We got this uh, video shared by the developer Geji Ne here that shows running the YouTube jailbreak as we've seen before. However, after it loads, the lapse kernel exploit as a payload is then sent over the network, which then runs the kernel exploit to jailbreak the PS5. And it does not load the elf loader. That's not implemented in this particular version here, but you can see it has ran the jailbreak because the debug settings are now enabled. So the lapse exploit could be released anytime. It'll probably be released once we have a full release of Y2JB version 1.2 which again could be very, very soon, uh, potentially tonight, maybe tomorrow. We'll have to wait and see. It looks like it's mostly stability and reliability improvements that are still being worked on to try and make this as stable and as reliable as possible for loading the jailbreak. Now, beyond that, we also have the Netflix and hack project, which has more or less turned into a full user land exploit at this point. So this uses a man in the middle attack, which allows us to inject and execute our own JavaScript into the error screen of the Netflix application. It currently supports version five and version six of the Netflix app. So you can install that particular version and set this up. So this comes to us, of course, by Earth Onion, but also uh, Co-AR, who has done a lot of work on this. And we also have UFM42 as well. So I believe the YouTube jailbreak will still be the favored option at least in the short term, because that runs all locally on the console itself. Whereas this particular exploit uses a man in the middle attack, which means you have to run a proxy server on your computer, uh, which will then inject the necessary code to trigger the exploit when it's requested by the Netflix application on the console, which means you have to set up your network settings on the PS5 to use a proxy server and you enter the IP address of your computer as the IP for the proxy. And then the port number is 8080. That's how you get it set up once you have the Netflix application installed. And then you run a proxy server on the computer, which you can install with Python using man in the middle proxy, MITM proxy. You can install that module on your computer and then you'll get that set up and running. And then you just need to run that proxy inside the directory that contains all of the files for the project. And that is how you get that set up. So when you run the Netflix application, it should trigger it and inject the JavaScript file once it loads. That is the general idea. A bit more complicated to set up this user land exploit. We'll have to see if anything can be done to that in the future to make it you know, more user friendly, closer to the way the YouTube jailbreak works. But it's good to have multiple options for user land exploits in case something gets patched in one, you have an alternative option. Now, speaking of alternative options, there's another user land exploit. Yes, we're talking about the third user land exploit right here. And this is the YARP userland exploit, which stands for yet another RenPy PlayStation exploit. And this one is from Hello Yunho. Definitely mispronounced that. But uh, anyway, so you can see here, this one is the game that I was talking about previously, Arcade Spirits, the new challengers in my previous video that could be used as an entry point. Well, this is the userland exploit for that game. It also supports another game, A Year of Springs PS4. So it needs to be the European version of the game, it seems, in order for this to work, not the US NTSC version. So it needs to be the PAL version rather than the NTSC version. So you can kind of tell, obviously the title ID tells you because CUSA32097 is the European title ID, whereas the US one is CUSA32096. So that's the one you don't want. The one you want is the one that ends in seven. However, if you're just looking at the box art of the game on some kind of store where you're buying it, it won't necessarily give you the title ID. Instead, you just look for the Peggy rating in the bottom left-hand corner of the box art. And that is what you're looking for, that Peggy 12. If you see that there, then that is the European version of the game that you're getting. Whereas the US version will have a different uh, ESRB rating in the bottom left-hand corner instead. So you want the one that has the PEGI rating, not the ESRB one. So this installs in the traditional way, the same as the Lua exploits. So for the PS4, all you got to do is get a physical copy of the game, then simply start up the game, get into the game a little bit, and then create a save file by pressing start and then going to save and create a new save slot and create that save file. Once the save is created, you can close out of the game and run the Apollo save tool. 
So you'll need obviously a console that already has an existing jailbreak um, to set this up initially. Obviously backup and restore methods will be available in the future for using this. But for now you need a jailbroken PS4 or a Discord save bot or something you can use for re-signing the save files. But generally to get it set up with the Apollo save tool, you run that, you then head over to the HDD saves section and then you locate the save file for the game, Arcade Spirits, select it, select that save file and use the option to copy it to the USB drive, which will decrypt the save and copy the decrypted save data to the USB. You can then plug that USB drive back into the computer, open up the save file in the PS4 Apollo folder. In there, you will find the decrypted save data and you just want to swap it out with the one from the release in this project. So right here, you've got the latest release, lt1.save. You basically download that save file and then swap out the one on the USB drive with the one from the GitHub repo. And then once that's done, you can then plug the USB back into the PS4, go to USB saves in the Apollo save tool, find the save file for the game, and then copy it back to the HDD, which will then re-encrypt it back into a resigned save file on the HDD for the game. And then you should be all good to go. At that point, you can close out of the Apollo save tool, restart your PS4, so that you're no longer running the jailbreak anymore. And then you can test it by simply running the game again on the console and then going to load the save file. So you can see that the save file image has changed. That's how you know that this has been successful. And then you can select that save file and it will run the exploit. And as you can see here, it runs to completion and we get a notification saying it's listening on the IP address of the PS4 on port 9025. So you can then send follow up payloads. The payloads are Python files uh, rather than Lua script or JavaScript files like we've seen in the other user land exploits. There is also a lapsed Python file for actually executing the full kernel exploit to fully jailbreak the console using this. Although it doesn't appear to be complete because it's not in the release section yet. And when I send this, it does fail with a bunch of error messages. So there is a possibility I'm not sending it correctly, but it could just be that it's not quite ready yet because it's not in the full releases and it's still being worked on. So anyway, that's what we've got going on there with this particular exploit. And then of course, once you've created the modified save file, you can then go to the application save data management section on the PS4 and export that save file to the USB, the encrypted version. And as long as you have another console that is activated with the same account ID as the account on the PS4 that you were using to create that modified save file with, you can basically transfer that save file to your jailbroken PS5 or to another PS4. So you've got that option there as well. So yeah, anyway, that's basically the quick TLDR. Of course, there's Save Wizard for resigning the save files, and also you've got uh, the Discord save bots that you can use as well. So anyway, that's basically what we've got going on there, another user land exploit. But believe it or not, we're still not done with uh, user land related stuff here, it seems. So we actually got this $10,000 bounty that appeared from a familiar face, actually. So Moor1. This one was a $10,000 bounty and it's interesting because this is a known developer in the scene who has been doing a lot of stuff with um, custom themes. So he's actually uh, been around in the scene for quite a long time. But this seems to be a big step forward for this developer because they managed to successfully report a bug to Sony and they have deemed it severe enough to award him with a $10,000 bounty, which is fantastic. So yeah, honestly, incredible. Congratulations to more one here for managing to achieve that. So we did get a bit more information about what this might be, and it might be some kind of WebKit based exploit here, or vulnerability at least, because Gejine is saying here, congrats on getting the 10K bounty. So Sony actually cares about WebKit, or is this not a WebKit report? And of course, more one here replies saying, yes, it's memory corruption crash bug in the PS4 WebKit. So that kind of narrows things down. It looks like some kind of WebKit vulnerability in the PS4 specifically at the moment here. It's interesting though, because normally you wouldn't think that PlayStation would actually take WebKit reports on Hacker One because the WebKit itself is actually Apple's WebKit. So a vulnerability in Apple's WebKit should be reported to Apple via their bug bounty program rather than PlayStation's, you would think. And it seems that they have ignored other WebKit um, vulnerabilities that were posted on Hacker One via PlayStation's program in the past. So it's a little strange that they seem to have turned face and are now accepting uh, WebKit vulnerabilities. And it also does seem to be a very high bounty for just uh, what would appear to be some kind of WebKit vulnerability. But 
Anyway, that appears to be the situation so far from what we know. So how do all of these new user land exploits fit into the bigger picture with the kernel exploit, the new one that the flow has released? Well, nothing changes immediately as we have the issue of most user land exploits being unable to load the new kernel exploit, leaving WebKit, BD Jailbreak and Mastercore as the only options. If this new WebKit vulnerability could be turned into a usable exploit, then perhaps we could use it to jailbreak the PS4 up to firmware 13.0. If not, then we're likely looking at 12.50 via the Blu-ray exploit in the short term. And for the PS5, the only usable one is Mastercore, unless a solution is discovered to allow the rest of the user land exploits to be used to load the new kernel exploit. By incrementing F count, as the flow stated, it is not impossible to get them working. So if that does happen, then the sky is the limit, as we would be able to use the WebKit or YARP on PS4 to jailbreak up to 13.0, and YouTube jailbreak Netflix or YARP to jailbreak up to 12.0 on the PS5. So beyond that, a few other developments happening. Uh, Lightning Mods, of course, has posted that he has a better game decryption for firmwares 3.00 plus using the dumper utility and a new custom background package installer, which is now available for testing in the package zone discord server. So again, you just go into the package zone discord into the ETA hen public test channel and go to the pinned section to get the latest ETA hen and items flow builds, uh, test builds from there. We can also see that the port number for FTP and Klog has been switched to the same port numbers as FTP and the Klog payloads. So 2121 for FTP and 3232 for the Klog server. He also states that the background package installer is just for firmwares 5.00 and below for now. So the custom background package installer lets you choose the location of where the package files are stored so that you can then install them with the package installer. Normally it would only look in the USB drive and the root of the USB drive, although maybe it was also looking in the data folder on the hard drive, which is another common location. However, you can now specify a specific folder. So if you don't have your package files in the root of the USB or you have them buried in some subfolder somewhere or somewhere else on the hard drive or on the M.2 drive, you can now specify that location in ETA hen so that when you go back to the package installer, all of the package files in that custom location will then show up and be available for install. So that's what's been added in this particular version. The 3.00 plus for the dumper utility likely has everything to do with the self decryptor, which has also been updated to now support 3.00 to 10.01. It's also fixed an issue which caused the end of the file to be cut off on certain rare scenarios. So that issue has now been resolved. So hopefully more games will be able to be properly decrypted compared to previously. And Echo Stretch has also updated the PS5 app dumper version, the payload that can dump and decrypt your games uh, to version 1.03 beta, which includes this update from Idlesauce, as well as a bunch of other improvements, including a new config file, which has the option to disable the decryptor or the logging. You just put the config file in MNT USB homebrew folder, and then you can tell it to disable logging if you want, or disable the decryptor if you just want to dump the raw game files but normally you would just leave it as is and it would output a log and also decrypt the executables. So you have the option to kind of customize how the dumper works there with the new config file. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. So hope you guys enjoyed this one or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.